I'm Tu Kim Lam. Welcome to the Medical News from Washington, D.C. On this edition of the Medical News, we will talk about cholesterol and the latest warning from um, the uh, Food and Drug Administration, or FDA. Here with us today is Dr. Sang Tran, who is currently practicing internal medicines in Falls Church, Virginia. He will share with us the latest information on the um, cholesterol and the treatment. Welcome to Medical News Show, Dr. Tran. Hello and welcome to uh, our show today and uh, hello Mrs. Lam. Uh, Dr. Tran, uh, first of all, we, um, we, today we're going to talk about uh, body fat or cholesterol. Can you tell our audience what is cholesterol and um, what the role of the cholesterol in our body? I believe this is most of the um, uh, people I think is already aware of the cholesterol. Uh, they may taking some medication to reduce the cholesterol in the blood. But the thing is, because of the uh, recent uh, uh, recommendation from FDA, I think it's, it's the time to reveal how is the cholesterol and what's really the role of the cholesterol in the body and how the cholesterol may affect the body in terms of causing the complications uh, for the body. I think, it's, first of all, cholesterol is a very important uh, substance in the body. <clears throat> because cholesterol is well produced by the liver and also at the same time will absorb to the intestine to increase the amount of cholesterol in the body. The cholesterol is play a role very important to produce the membrane for most of the cells in the body, including the brain cells. Number two, the cholesterol was the key component to make the steroid, meaning the hormone for the body to use, like steroid hormone or the sex hormone. And thirdly, they have to produce vitamin D, and fourthly, is they produce bile acid. The bile acid will be really excreted into the intestine to help digest the fat that we eat, and then reabsorb and recycle back to the liver to reproduce another cholesterol. So about 50% of most of the cholesterol will be recycled. And then they keep using the cholesterol to build more and more uh, substance or more structures uh, for the body. But unfortunately, when it's the cholesterol is very high, then it may cause some problem we call complication from high cholesterol. So um, you mentioned that cholesterol play a very important role in our health. Um, so let's talk about when it's become uh, beneficial to our health and when does cholesterol become harmful to our health and how many types of fat in our body? Basically, when we talk about cholesterol, we talk about the total cholesterol. But the total cholesterol include the HDL, this good cholesterol, to protect the artery. The bad cholesterol called LDL. The LDL will really causing problem because they have to bring the fat into the fat tissue around inside the arteries of the body and causing the occlusions or the obstructions of all the arteries of the body. And thirdly, we have VLDL really is not important because we relate more to the, uh, the uh, transport, the, the fat into the body to different organs. And uh, fourthly, we have the, the, the different fat called triglyceride. Uh, that's the difference of fat in the system that we may have the chance to talk uh, later in the future. So really, when we talk about the cholesterol, remember the total cholesterol, the bad cholesterol we call LDL, and the good cholesterol called HDL. So what happens when the level of cholesterol increase? How does it affect our health? Normally, the cholesterol was defined normal when it's less than 200 uh, milligram per DL. But when you go from 200 to 140, it's because it's high. High, this means it's about the normal. But when is the cholesterol is go beyond 240, because it's very high. Now, we need to be careful about that because when it's so high, they need treatment. But people from 200 to 240 also sometimes need treatment as well because of the other risk factors like people have diabetes, 
people have really obesity, have the family history of heart problems, or any other disease that need to be treated. So therefore, the, the indication to use the treatment really based on the total amount of cholesterol, but also based on how much bad cholesterol in the system. If the, the LDL go beyond 100 uh, milligram per DL, then consider high. And it was high is causing problem for the artery. Therefore, they have, we have to look at that as well to bring it down to below uh, 100. So, um, so genetic also um, is a factor that uh, causes high cholesterol. Yes, we have a, a small number of people who really have high cholesterol and at the same time have high triglycerides. And the combination of the uh, uh, high level of both fat in the system usually relate to the family. This means it relates to the gene that causing this problem. Now, can you uh, give us some example of the uh, cholesterol level and when does the patient need to um, take medication for it? Right now, with the indication we just mentioned about that anything is go beyond 240, I think we need to get treatment. But 40, from 200 to 240, it depends on the other risk factor that uh, physicians have to decide, really provide treatment or not in this group, besides the exercise and uh, diet. Let's talk about treatment. Can you tell us uh, what are the current medication and all other ways that you treat uh, cholesterol? The treatment basically uh, for all the medication we use right now is two groups. The first group is try to reduce the productions of the cholesterol in the liver and by targeting the enzyme that stimulate that system, the process. So the medication called statin or simvastatin Crestor, Libitor, or any kind with the statin usually is target, reduce, and block the enzyme that produce the cholesterol in the, the body. The second group is instead of blocking the production, we reduce the absorption. So the second group is called Welchor, Zizia. Usually they try to block the fat from being absorbed to the intestine, to the liver. And the third group is niacin is a little bit different because they already use for people really to increase the, the good cholesterol and go HDL. And mostly used in people with heart problem or people have a stroke in order to build up the HDL to protect their bodies for a long term. What about the side effect from all these medications? The side effect is very important to remember because most of that right now may causing a little bit uh, itching uh, may causing stomach upset or long term may trigger some problem in the liver, but not everybody really get that kind of side effect. The thing is, really statistically, it's about five to ten percent may have some abnormal liver, but we never know because people may have underlying liver problems. So we need to be careful, and mostly efficient will check the liver function when people are on the, these medication. Now, on top of that is. Uh, the uh, side effect also relate to really the injury of the muscles causing uh, muscle pain. And the most serious one is called rhabdomyolysis, this means the necrosis or the damage of more cells in the muscles and causing release of the enzyme of the muscle called CPK. This CPK increase may accumulate in the kidney and obstruct the kidney uh, filter and causing uh, renal failure. So these are the most serious ones that uh, we usually see. Therefore, right now, the FDA mentioned or give the recommendation because we already have the report about the complication related to using statin and treating with cholesterol. What about the food in terms of treating uh, the cholesterol? The food is really, uh, I think, is very important because it's most of the time, you know, we get the food and uh, high cholesterol. I think it's so complex issues about the uh, the food. My recommendation is, I think, is we need to go easy on certain kind of food like seafood, clams, and crabs and shrimp. Uh, go a little bit easy on the uh, whole meal, uh, butter, cheese, muffin. Uh, these food is high in cholesterol, but we have to avoid. That means we use the minimal amount of food, such as the good food, like bacons, uh, duck meat, 
baked and uh, pork and fried pork and any anything is fried because we transform the regular fat into trans fat is very toxic fat. It would deep fry like deep fry fish become unhealthy because instead of eating uh, fried fish, we try to get steam or something else. I think it's, it's better and try to avoid like uh, cream and cream cheese and any cake with a lot of cream on top of that. I think it does, that's the reason why I have to avoid these things. And if you have to eat, you eat a small amount. I think this, that's it. So before we go, uh, would you share with our audience about the latest warning from the FDA? Yeah, it's very important to remember right now the FDA warning or giving the new recommendation or new restrictions on the use of statin, especially the medication called simvastatin or the trade name is Zocor. And the reason why, because they see so many reports related to the side effect, especially when the high doses 80 milligram were used for the patient. Now, mostly the people with heart attack surgery of the heart, stroke using high dose cholesterol. The idea behind this is because to prevent the occlusion uh, of the other arteries in the body. But when using long term, most people with heart problem, uh, stroke, or obstruction of the leg, you have to use long term, mean year and year. Therefore, it may cause a problem because the accumulation of medication in the body. So right now, the FDA highly recommend that we have to reduce the doses to about 20 milligrams. Now, sometimes lower, like if we have to use this medication with the blood pressure medication like calcium tinder blocker, then you have to reduce to 10 milligrams a day only. Now, if you use the simvastatin with the other uh, amlodipine for lower blood pressure, then you have to reduce the, the medication to 20 milligrams. And also another recommendation is you cannot use this medication when you use the antibiotic like zitromycin or erythromycin or using any medication antifungal like ketoconazole. Now, thirdly, they also have some kind of recommendation is uh, about the role of the uh, uh, grapefruit juice uh, when using statin, and they highly recommend it to reduce the, the amount of uh, grapefruit juice when using or on treatment for with statin. Can you tell us a little bit more about the negative effect um, of, between the interaction between the grapefruit juice and the medication? The grapefruit juice has been studied very well with so many different studies, and they said it's because they interfere with the enzyme in the intestine. That enzyme has the role to break the statin down to different small uh, molecules to be absorbed. And the, the, the uh, grapefruit juice really have the chemicals inside to interfere with that process and build up the concentrations of the statin in the blood is so high, sometimes up to five, six times. And the studies show sometimes just one cup of grapefruit juice may increase the dose of statin up so high and causing a little bit more side effect on muscle and at time it causes rhabdomyolysis, meaning the necrosis of muscle. Therefore, right now, most study, most experts agree that if you have to use statin, then try to avoid the grapefruit juice and try to use the other uh, thing. But some people, they love to drink grapefruit juice, then you have to use a limited amount that recommend by the FDA, I mean the smallest amount of reference use. Thank you, sir. Uh, that is all the time we have for our medical news show today. Thank you for joining us, sir. Yeah, thank you for watching our shows today. And uh, one more time, so again, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Slap. You're welcome, sir. That was Dr. Sang Tran, who just shared with us some information on the cholesterol and the latest warning uh, from the FDA. That is all the time we have for this edition of Medical News. If you have additional questions about any of these uh, information above, please talk to your family physician. Thanks for watching. I am Tu Kim Lam. We'll see you next time on the Medical News. Until then, have a great one.